Hello and welcome to Paint With Colour. Today I've got an A3 canvas and I'll be using a selection of brushes and some acrylic paints. I'm using my uh, Magello palette which keeps paints wet for several weeks at a time and what's great is you can just peel them off when they go hard. So the colours I'm using today are Titanium White, Mars Black, Yellow Ochre, Lemon Yellow, Ultramarine, Cerulean Blue, Burnt Sienna and Cadmium Red. So all of those colours will be on the screen for you. So I've got my canvas, I've got my paints, I've got my brushes. Let's make a start. So here we go, I'm going to get a nice big brush. This is a one inch flat brush, nylon bristle. And we want a soft sky. So I'm going to go take a big dollop of white. Don't be frightened to uh, mix a lot of paint. Make sure your brush is loaded. You don't necessarily need lots of paint on there, but you want a nice, um, a nice mix and a nice charged brush. We're going to have a nice silver birch woodland today using a bit of a knife. I'm going to go on there with that, pop my palette down. And we're going to make a start getting the paint on the canvas. I will paint round the edges later. So it needs to be done. Acrylics will dry really quickly and it's quite warm in here today. So I need to allow for that to happen. So I go with a little bit of white, not cleaning my brush, not because I'm lazy, but I want the subtle colours to blend through. So a little bit of white in there. You can hear how I'm moving the brush across the palette, the canvas. I want to go a little bit darker at the top. So I'll use the corner of the paint on my brush, a few little blobs. This is with ultramarine. So we've got a lot of ultramarine and we're going to move down quite quickly. If you don't find that the paint feels right and it feels a little bit sticky on your brush, you can um, add a tiny bit of water, just the corner of your brush. You don't want a wet, soggy brush. There we go. So that's quite subtly mixed. Let's give that a bit of a clean. Shake off the excess, cover the cameraman, and then we're going to go with a little bit of yellow ochre and white. Now the reason why I'm using yellow ochre and white rather than yellow for the, the lower part of the sky is because otherwise we'll get green. And we don't want a green sky, we're not painting the northern lights. So let's just plop it on, there's your technical term and blend upwards. Now the, the paint is still a little bit wet underneath, so we're after a nice subtle blend. I'm not having any clouds or anything in this sky. We just want to keep it nice and simple for you today. There we go, like that. So we've got our basic sky in. I'm not gonna add any clouds or anything. Um, I'm just gonna add um, a base which is just going to be black. I've not cleaned my brush. Let's go a little bit higher at either end. So we've got this black paint feeling. This is only an underpainting, so don't panic at this point. So there we go covering it in. There's still a little bit of colour on my brush and that's fine. This doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly straight and smooth. Give it a bit of a tap. A nice square based or heavy jar works really well because you want to push your bristle right in and then wipe off any excess 
or give it a shake. Right, let's pop that down. So we want to create the feeling of a little bit of a wood, but it's the trees that are going to be the important bit. So I've got here a really old, they're called baker's brushes, and art shops do sell them. Um, they're really stiff bristled hog hair brushes. And I just want to give a few sort of background bushes and things. So I've still got a little bit of my sky colour there that's a little bit wet. So if I go in with a bit of lemon yellow, maybe a little bit more ultramarine in there. I love touch of burnt sienna. A bit more blue. Give it a stab. And then so the older the brush, the better the, the effect for bushes and trees. Just picking up with a little bit of the black that's wet underneath and that's absolutely perfectly fine. Let's go with a slightly stronger color now, a little bit more yellow. Push the paint into the bristles. Lightly stipple. Do you know what? Let's have a slightly bigger tree up there. You have to think like a tree. You want it to not look too uniform. Be random and have a little bit of a dab. Then, if I'm nice and quick, get the old palette knife out. Painting knife, this is. Scratch out a few little twigs or branches in there. I'll keep it nice and clean because you can see right through to the sky. So then we want to create a bit of a grassy area. So I'm going to go with lemon yellow. Now, lemon yellow, black isn't like a solid black colour, it has a lot of blue. In it so if I go with a tiny bit of black with my yellow my lemon you get a lovely olive green now bear in mind the black is still wet so it will make it slightly darker and we'll do a few little shades of grass stipple so any old brush will do you could use a fan brush or anything on here and you can hear because I'm using a natural canvas a real canvas you can hear that bounce it's important though to leave the areas of dark underneath and by doing that you'll get lovely texture and the grass will look just like velvet it helps for the layers of the contouring we will use the fan brush in a minute because I can't do a painting without one so you really want to load the brush by stroking it flipping it and stroking it you get a nice soft chisel edge so we'll just work on the grass can you see that harder edge there that we've created I'm going right the way across coming down and I'll do the same on the other side but I'll reload the brush because this is a woodland we want lots of layers because we're going to do a few trees same color and you can see that the older the brush the way the bristles have splayed I've used this brush for oils for acrylics um, for all sorts of textures in here and it just works beautifully I'll fan brush later once the trees are on because the fan brush will really help um, add uh, some depth and some longer textures in the uh, in the grasses now it's important to not get too carried away and attack your canvas while you're doing this you really want it to be soft and subtle we could go a little bit more with highlights just to get some layers because we've only got a background and this foreground here so if I go in with a little bit more yellow haven't cleaned the brush we just want to tint it slightly
I can create here, look, another slightly brighter layer. And the same here. Now the black is still wet underneath, so it will constantly keep mixing. But as this is acrylics, it doesn't take too long to dry. So this is all with that lemon yellow and black mix. There we go. Let me clean that brush. Stab it right in the bottom of the bristles of the base of the jug or your water jar, whatever you're using. Chocolate spread jars are a really good way of um, creating a nice heavy water jar for your paints because it's got a wide top and a heavy base. So you can really go to town on the, uh, the stabbing. Let's give it a bit of a shake. Cover everything in sight. So we've got a bit of a, a, a scene going on already without having too much going on. So I'm going to go with a rigger brush or a liner brush, a long thin brush there and make our background trees. So I'll go, I might use a little bit of this green in there as well. So I want to go with burnt sienna, a little bit of ultramarine. Now don't forget, don't worry that there's a lot of paint on here because this paint will stay wet. Once the lid's on, it's airtight for two weeks or three weeks depending on the weather and depending on where it's stored. And then eventually as it gets uh, beyond usable, um, all you need to do is just um, leave it out in the open, let it dry, and then you can peel the paint right off depending how thick it is. Let's go with a tiny bit of white, tiny bit of yellow ochre. So we want a nice soft colour for background trees. Nothing too severe, more white more ochre. So what I'll be doing is going in and making this the consistency of ink and you can see as I do it I'm rolling the brush between my finger and thumb to give the brush a point so we want really fluid paint. And we'll sort of Come along here with a bit of a tree make it nice and runny if it's not fluid it will break as it is here and you always brush outwards with a tree because the branches naturally taper and get thinner so you can think of a capital Y Put a bit of foliage on this this is just background and then we'll go into the foreground trees shortly we need you can't just have one we need at least three i think let's go for a bit taller make it nice and runny capital y flick up flick out lots of little y's of these let's thicken that trunk up a little there we go. Roll that brush around in the paint. Bring it out and up. Out and up. We can't have two. It has to be an odd number. So let's stick a third one here. Leaning over. We'll put a little bit of foliage on these just to sit them in the landscape. If you want things to look like they're behind, you can just add a little bit more water, dilute the paint, makes it slightly paler, and we can have branches behind. Okay, so now comes with our baker's brush again. And maybe we'll add a little bit of white to the green that we've got depends on the season that we're trying to create but we don't want we don't want a lot so slight little taps just over the edges we want to sort of 
give the trees a little bit of an outline maybe a little bit more blue in there slightly darker green for this tree so you can see I'm not punching it I'm adding enough pressure to get this tree a shape cover up any bits in the sky that I didn't like I need a bigger brush so let's stab that you can hear how I'm stabbing but there's not a huge amount of paint on here maybe I'll use this little dark bit just in we haven't got a light source yet so we'll think about that I want the light to come from the right so what I'll do if I go with a tiny weeny bit of black I haven't cleaned my brush. Let's just look at the darker side, which will be on the left hand side because the light's coming from this angle. Could put it on first, like we did with the grass, that's fine. With acrylics, there's no right or wrong. As long as you get there in the end, it's fine. Okay, let's go with a little bit more yellow. Push that one over. Yeah, put a little bit down here. I'm going to put some big trees up. Right, so what I'll do, I'll pop it, pop my brush. Go with a slightly lighter colour, so more white in with this sort of buff colour that I've made using the rigger brush again. I want an off-white, sort of a taupe or a mushroom colour. There's a little bit of blue in there, which is perfect. And I'm just going to come down on the right-hand side of the trees, because that's where our light is coming from. It doesn't have to be a solid line. break it up. Might go slightly darker brown on the other side and then that gives us a little time for some trees, some big birch trees. So let's go with a little bit of dark on the opposite side. Flick out at the bottom. Like so. Right now we've got the big birch trees to come in, in the mid-ground, and they're going to be huge. So we're going to go with, although they're going to be big, I'm only going to use a, a half inch flat, because once we have the knife, it will get bigger and bigger and wider and wider. So we'll go in with some burnt sienna, and maybe a little bit of ultramarine. Nice and dark. Now the paint isn't runny. It's mixed with that more fluid paint we were using. And then we come in and, oh, I don't know, where should we stick these? Let's stick this right down here. Oh. If you're a breath holder, do you remember to breathe when you do this? I'm pressing down a little bit harder so it goes a little bit wider at the bottom, flick out a little bit. You can see it's mixing with the other paints. That's fine. Let's mix a little bit more. Burnt sienna, a little bit of black, a little bit of ultramarine for a dull brown. Mm, I like those trees there. Mm. Let's stick one here then. wider at the base. See I've still got a lot of paint on my brush. I'm going to cover this one up just because I can. I'll go with a slightly thinner one so I'm using the brush on its side and again we want 
odd numbers of trees. Anything in a painting looks better with an odd number. Maybe we'll stick with just these three. And you know what, let's let's stick a branch there with this one. That'll break it up a little bit. And we'll while we've got this colour, we'll start at the bottom here. Come round. I can add a nice little pathway that I can lighten up. later on that's still a little bit wet so you can see by working on a canvas it seals the colour uh, and uh, it lets you work for a little bit longer if I add a little bit of yellow ochre and white on this same brush I haven't cleaned the brush lights come from this angle we'll just lightly skip over the left hand side of the tree. Right, so now I'll keep this brush because we need to mix up some colours. We've got one main colour there. I'm going to mix up a slight mid-tone. So I'm going to use that tree colour with a bit of white. So we're after a sort of mushroomy grey colour. So add a bit of white, a bit of ultramarine. And we need a lot of this. Dollop of white. Look how much is on there. Right, put that brush aside and we'll get the old knife out. So I want to work on the right hand side of each tree. So I'm going to use the right hand side of the knife but on the back. So if I hold the knife like that, pivot it slightly and scrape across, I get all the paint just on the side of the tree that I want. And then I'm very quickly now you shouldn't hear much noise with this because it's the knife that's moving the paint rather than scrapping in. We're not making toast and buttering it with an inch of our life. We're just moving the paint across the tree. And this is where your trees get fatter. They put on a lot of weight as you start scraping. This is layer one. There will be two more layers on each of these trees. You can push through a little bit and get a little bit of texture of the canvas coming through, but it's not the canvas texture that we're after. We're after birch bark. So I'm not just going flat across, I'm curving round to imitate the uh, texture or the roundness of the tree. Then we want a dark side. So I'm going to mix more black and burnt sienna together. So it's more like a, a charcoaly, browny, grey, blacky colour. <laughs> Didn't clean my brush, so I've got a nice mixture of tones in there. Now that is going to be on the opposite side of the tree. So if we look at our knife, we want it on that angle and going in. So if I keep my knife like that, I can then go and scrape on the opposite side. And then very lightly, very carefully move the knife across. Now it's still wet underneath, which is perfect. Little, because I haven't mixed the colors thoroughly either. What that will do is it will give me lots of different tones and textures in these trees. And then it 
cleans up a lot of the lines or the angles but we've also got a highlight to put on this because these trees are in the dark at the moment so a painting knife is slightly different to a palette knife a painting knife looks like a builder's trowel with a little crooked neck and that neck is really useful to stop your knuckles from dragging through your paint so it's a painting knife we're painting with it, we're not mixing colours on the palette with it. Slight look out. And this is just a little simple exercise. If you get stuck and you don't know what you feel like painting and you want to try acrylics, this is a really good way of just practicing all sorts of techniques. Okay, so now wipe the knife off. So now we're going to go straight in with white and I don't want to pull too much white out so let's, let's go over here. Now it's going on the right side because that's where our light is coming from. Look at that, we've turned the lights on. dirty quite quickly try to let you want to get that paint to break and you do that by having more not more paint on your knife and hardly any pressure the paint is the tool to move the, the knife is the tool to move the paint across so it shouldn't really touch the surface the knife never touches the surface thin branches on and a little bit of grass and then we can call this a day as a little exercise not too far from finishing if you end up getting a bit too excited with your light highlights you can always put the darker color back on and move it around but you know it'll look a bit like reflected light or even just a little bit of extra bright bark or the way that the sun is hitting so it's it's fine don't worry a little bit more white just right at the bottom so you can see how i'm able to pinpoint where i want the white to go there we go, let's pop that down, let's get the old rigger out. Work up some of this dark that still hasn't dried on this palette. And this is just a plastic palette, there's no fancy chemicals or anything in it. So we can bring out a little bit. So you need to make it like ink, don't forget. right off the page and up there give it a clean so I've still got because I didn't get a chance to clean the brush I've still got a little bit on here that I can just stab and dab maybe a little bit off here to make it feel like there is growth just off the tree that we can't see right so a couple more things we'll hopefully try and highlight with a slightly flatter brush the um, the pathway so we'll go with a bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of white I haven't used any cadmium red maybe I won't just a little flat brush I just want to drag and highlight the path if you do too much it'll look like stairs or some sort of weird brown tornado a few highlights 
that's on there. Then we'll get our good old fan brush out. Got to be a hog bristle because, or a really stiff bristle brush, um, because it's it's the stiffness that we need to give us the texture for the grass. So I'm going to go in with some neat lemon yellow. My brush is dry, maybe a little bit of white. I'll mix with some of the green that's on there. You can see I'm really pushing it in and loading the brush up. And then I'm just going to bounce along the bottom. The brush is flat. Give it a bit of a bounce. And you can see that lovely grassy texture. There we go. And I think we'll call that a day. So thank you very much for joining me. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.